All right, we have another evidence pair, and this one is a little hard if we're just kind of going through willy-nilly and just reading lines and, and just kind of forgetting that the SAT leaves really important clues for us. If we try to find matching ideas, this question is super easy. So let's take a look at what they're asking us first. We should start with the question, right? The QLC method. Let's start with the question, make sure we understand what's being asked. According to the passage, Theus and Adler's research offers an answer to which of the following questions? Okay, offers an answer. Good. Now we go to the line references and we try to find one that seems to offer an answer to something. So based on the chronology rule, the chronology rule, which tells us that the questions are supposed to be in the order that they appear in the passage, it's very unlikely that choices A and B are correct. So for this question, we need to look back and say, okay, well, where did we have our last line reference? And sure enough, question 30 had line reference 68. So that means it's unlikely that the line reference here uh, in A and B is going to be right. Now, obviously, they break the rule. We've seen that once on this test already. But it's a good indicator that if you are totally confused, you at least have a good reason to guess from C and D and, as opposed to A and B. But we're still going to read everything. We have to read everything just in case. So looking at choice A, 17 through 20. Let's see what they say. Um... In one recent study, Nina Theus and Lynn Adler took on the specific problem of the Texas gourd, how to attract enough pollinators but not too many beetles. Well, that sounds like a question that they were trying to answer. So that seems pretty good. But if we understand the original question in 31, this is not a good line reference. We need evidence of what the uh, experiment answered. This is just a question. It has no evidence of an answer to that question. So it's going to be wrong, but if you're not convinced yet as to my reasoning, just hold on. When we see the right answer and we can put the two next to each other, I think it'll make a lot more sense. So let's take let's little, put a little pause on choice A here, and let's look at uh, choice B, lines 22 to 25. So this is A. B is right here. Uh, the aroma includes 10 compounds, but the most abundant and the only one that lures squash bees into traps is 1,4-dimethoxybenzene. This is just like a random science fact. This does not answer any questions to me. This seems totally random. Cool. 79 to 84. Now we're back into a place where I would expect it might be a valid line reference. Hand pollination didn't rescue the seed set, indicating that beetles damaged flowers directly, regardless of whether they also repelled pollinators. Hand pollination did rescue fruit weight, a hard-to-interpret result that suggests that lost bee visits did somehow harm fruit development. That's like science nonsense to me. I understand it has something to do with seeds and, and weight, but I don't really know what that's about. Now, I wouldn't eliminate it. I would just be like, well, if I can't find anything better, maybe I need to go back and better understand what this line reference is. It's okay to just be confused temporarily. Sometimes that confusion won't matter. You'll be able to figure out the answer anyway. Here, I'm just gonna table this topic and see what happens. Let's look at D, 85 to 86. The new results provide a reason that Texas gourd plants never evolved to produce a stronger scent. That is evidence that they answered a question. The new results provide a reason. That's telling us that the experiment that they did had results that gave a reason, an answer to some question. This one is about the, the gourds and the scent. I don't really care about that part yet because I'm finding matching ideas in this line reference to the initial question in, line, in number 31. So this is a case where I would be very confident that D is the answer. It's got the right ideas. It's just like perfectly set up. But just to go back to line reference A for a second, let's compare this. The new results provide a reason that Texas gourd plants never evolved to produce a stronger scent to line reference A. In one recent study, Nina Theus and Lynn Adler took on the specific problem of the Texas gourd, how to attract enough pollinators but not too many beetles. So that's saying they took on a problem. That's choice A. Choice D is saying they now have a reason, an answer, 
based on the results from this experiment that they did. That is a tighter match with the original question. Hopefully you see that. This is the kind of thing that makes the SAT reading a lot easier, is if you can get good at matching ideas, sometimes it'll be really clear what the answer is because you're just like, oh, they're basically saying the same thing in different words. This is pretty obvious. So for me, with enough practice, this is one of those obvious cases. But now I need to look at 31 and I need to make sure that I have a question that matches with that line reference. So choice A, how can Texas Gourd plants increase the number of visits they receive from pollinators? Uh, that kind of matches with some of the line references we threw away, but it doesn't match with this one. So the number of pollinators not mentioned in line reference D. Choice B, why is there an upper limit on the intensity of the aroma emitted by Texas Gourd plants? Well, speaking of finding matching ideas, there's a lot right here. So upper limit means that they never evolved a stronger scent. Well, scent also matches with aroma pretty nicely, and intensity matches with stronger pretty nicely. So notice there's a lot of words in that line reference that have direct correlations to the words in the choices. That's a really good sign. We always have to look out for the times where there's like another word thrown in that's a little bit of a trap, a, a wrong word, and that might make the whole thing wrong, but we've kind of checked everything here, and it all checks out. That's a really good sign. Let's move on to C and D, though, and just make sure. Why does hand pollination rescue the fruit weight of beetle-infested gourd plants? Well, that has to do with this, this line C here that I didn't understand before. I know it's about fruits, but now I don't really care. I know it was a trap. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Why do Texas gourd plants stop producing fragrance attractive to pollinators when beetles are present? That also seems like it might relate to line reference D because it's about the scent and how much they produce, but there's nothing really about beetles in that line reference, and also stop producing is very strong. The line reference says that they don't produce a stronger scent, but that doesn't mean they stop producing the scent. So there's something a little too far about this question. It's, it's taking lines and just running with them way beyond what was actually said. So this, this choice is too strong, which leaves us with B and D for 31 and 32. Hard questions, but look for those matching ideas. If you can get good at that skill, it will be so much easier to deal with these pairs, but really just any line reference question in general, because you'll, you'll be able to align certain things and say, ah, here, they're saying the same thing. That really makes the reading much more doable.